Hi guys, Paul here. And this is the video that I've probably had more requests for than anything else. Uh, every time I've put a video out or posted something on Instagram, people usually comment on the GoPro cases that we use. This is something that uh, I've designed to protect our GoPros. I've got the files up on Thingiverse. I will have a link in the description, but I'm gonna run you through exactly how you need to actually use these and what the differences between the various mounts are. Now it's important to point out that these cases are actually designed to be printed uh, using PLA, not RTPU. So keep that in mind. This is the way they were designed. It was uh, well before we actually had RTPU. And these cases have actually served us well and we've had no real issues with them. We haven't broken a GoPro. I'm sure if you hit something tough enough, hard enough, fast enough, you can actually destroy your GoPro. So keep that in mind. I'll, I'll run you through exactly why I've designed this the way I have and explain some of the ideas behind it. So what we have is three different types of mounts. And the first two we're going to have a look at are uh, these two guys. And if you look really carefully, I'm not sure how well you're going to notice that, but um, one is set at 30 degrees and the other one is set at 35 degrees. And that little hole you're looking at is actually for the cable tie that actually holds it to your frame. So these will go on a frame similar to say uh, an alien or something along those lines where you can just uh, cable tie it to the top of the frame. And I'll show you that little um, in a little while. So two main components. Um, this is the main casing. Now this one is different to the others in that it doesn't have any angling at all. And this is the one we actually designed to use with the Helix Quads. And if you have a look very carefully, I'm not sure how well you can see that in the video, but you can actually break that piece away. And if you break that piece away, it actually gives you access to your memory card and also gives you the ability to actually charge uh, the quad up. Now, depending on what sort of quad configuration you put that on, you may not be able to access uh, the back of the quad and hence um, that's why it's actually designed that way. I'm sure people will make variations of these uh, in, in time anyway. So on the bottom of these, what I do is actually put on these rubber pads. These are the self-adhesive pads. You can find these at most stores or hardwares. And essentially that just gives us a little bit of dampening. Uh, and then once it actually gets compressed down, uh, that little dampening just eliminates any uh, vibration. You need to actually cable these guys down pretty hard, so keep that in mind. So to protect the actual GoPro's lens, we're using layer lenses. These are the Lumineer style ones, uh, and that basically gives the lens heaps of protection. So I uh, keep that in mind. I prefer to scratch one of these than uh, replace the lens of a GoPro. So as far as holding the actual GoPro in place, what I'm using is a rubber band. That's probably the best solution I found for this. And you sort of wrap it around like so with this design. It doesn't look very pretty, but it does the job. And essentially, this is what holds the GoPro in place, uh, stopping it from actually falling out. But no, obviously, in a high impact accident, it can still fall out. I'd prefer it to actually fall out if required, but I've never actually had one fall out as yet. And as you can see, we've got a nice strong plate to protect the fascia of the GoPro, and that's what that's designed for. And as far as the rest of the casing, we've got our main holes to access the LCD and the um, start-stop button, etc. We've got little um, holes here, and these are to allow the microphone to still get good sound. Uh, that way you haven't got muffled sound. So what you're looking at here is the GoPro Hero 3 or Hero 4, I'm not sure which one this is, mounted on a Helix Quad and that's the way it goes on. I have got the rubber band on there, so keep that in mind. And um, that's pretty much what it looks like. Uh, we've got the access hatch, and that allows us to actually uh, access the memory card and also charge, and the one cable tie that actually holds the GoPro in place. And in a high-speed accident, that cable tie can snap off, and it is designed to actually snap off in that instance. And you do need to cable tie it pretty hard. So this is the 30 degree mount, I think it is. Um, and that's on an Impulse RC Alien. Uh, this is a five inch body with a six inch arms. And as you can see, one cable tie holds it in place and that's pretty much all there is to it. And in a high speed accident, uh, these do quite often snap off, especially in this type of configuration frame. Uh, so you may find your GoPro will be separated from your actual quad, but the main thing is it is actually protected. So keep in mind, these are actually printed using PLA. That's the way they were designed, um, based around using PLA. I doubt this is gonna work if you print it with TPU because that's not what these uh, mounts were designed for. So keep that in mind. I will have a link in the description for the Thingiverse file. 
As far as printing these for people, look, it's unlikely I'm going to be able to do many of these. I could probably do some for people in Australia because postage isn't too costly. But um, essentially, you're best off tapping into either a friend who has a 3D printer. I think you can even get parts printed through Thingiverse themselves if you can't access anyone. So uh, keep that in mind. So anyway, I'll leave the video with that. Thanks very much for taking the time to watch this video. And I'll catch you guys in the next one.